All right, super excited to be here. And why is that? It's not even cliche. Uh, six years ago, when I started ideating on my business, this was the first community uh, meetup that I was actually at. Like, it's, it's, it's impressive on the full cycle uh, with perseverance and support on, on where you can take a business. So I'm really excited to share my journey, some of the value props that I've learned on scaling a, a business that was 80% Canadian based and now we're 80% US based and we're expanding globally at a three to five X uh, growth year over year. So really excited to be here and uh, share my story. So who am I? Connor Atchison, I'm the founder and uh, CEO of WiseDocs. So what is WiseDocs? It's, uh, it's an insure tech platform that summarizes, indexes and organizes medical records for back office and offshore work. And uh, I'll get into some of the details on why that isn't the sexiest space, but it's really important. So where did my journey start? Veteran, but 12 years in the military, six of those years um, as an infantry officer. And then I switched over to health administration. And it was during that time in my tenure in health administration, running hospitals and claims, claims functions that I realized there was a real big problem. And the problem was the manual process. Why were we actually going over physical paperwork with tabs and sticky notes when this could have been digitized? It was absolutely ridiculous. And then it really hit home when I actually had to go through the process myself. And my short-term disability claim took 18 months, which makes absolutely no sense. And that's really where I picked up the torch to say, someone's going to solve for this and help veterans. Well, I thought I could sell a product to veterans and they don't really care. Uh, B2C is something that is such a hard market to get into. And it, after two years of building the business, we had to pivot. And we found an opportunity on a trillion dollar total addressable market. And that's really what we've doubled down on and expanded in all different aspects of claims from workers comp, uh, every aspect of insurance, PNC, and disability. So how did we find the niche? This is the hard part. Um, I've always thought, oh, you know, you get an idea, get something that's sticky, the market wants to buy it, go. Uh, no, you have to go deep. And really what we found, it wasn't just the claimant and the claims adjuster relationship, that 20% that sits on the top, it was what actually was deeper, what was beneath the iceberg, beneath the tidal pool. And that 80% is an immense stakeholder relationship and ecosystem. And when you can find that and double down on it, that's where you can actually get the most traction and the opportunity to create value. And this is where really what we've, we've, we've focused on in those four segments that I addressed earlier. So building a strong value props next. Once you understand what that ecosystem is, go deep. Hyper-verticalization -vertical is critical to driving business value. And I'll get into some of the, the coming changes and the trends that we see with AI, and how do you stay in front of that? How do you just not wrap an LLM or an SLM around something and try to sell some superficial product, but create value? And that's where we looked at it. How do we just focus on two, three, four, five things? Do it really, really well. That's the trick. Don't try to boil the ocean. There's so many incumbents. There's so many competitors that are trying to do everything, but they're going to choke on that. And what we've done is just go very, very deep on it as a subject matter expert. And that's how we're staying in front of like the trend. Like We're, we're looking at the next new Moore's Law. Really, it is. It's, it, it's two, every two years, we're seeing a step change. And the step change is limiting value and taking that away from technical functions. We see it with the, the LLMs, the new models, the compute. Everything is going much faster and more rapidly. So the way we look at this is similar on this graph, step change. We're looking at the overall magnitude of value compared with the duration of change. So every time we start seeing a model released, what, 18 months ago we had 3.5 chat GPT, now we have four. That's 18 months we're starting to see this value prop shrink. So what I tell clients is, do you want to constantly cycle your solution stack or do you want to stay in front of the curve? But that goes for tech entrepreneurs as well. As you move up that step change, it becomes tighter, more controlled, and actually more competitive. And that's really where you want to get in front of that. How do you create value that's deep, hyper-verticalized, and actually can address the client needs? So this is where I'm, I, I employ you to think deeper. I only have five minutes. I could talk probably 20 on this. Um, but really chisel your path to value proposition. Find, find that market that's super, super deep, super verticalized, create the value, and then give that and deliver that to a client for a great experience. And that's really where you're gonna have the win. 
And if you want to talk to me, I'll be around after, or you can reach me um, at wisedocs.com or, or LinkedIn. Thanks, everyone. Hello. OK, I'm going to actually start with the first question. Can you give us an example of how you're hyper-verticalized and hyper-focused and have an insight or something that lets you win the insurance companies? Great question. So what we, we've seen in trends and, and with you know, competition, how you differentiate, um, everyone's trying to like look at things on a horizontal plane, right? So if we can actually look at this in a way, what is the core function? It's the medical record. How do we look at a PDF, unstructured data, and understand that in and out and, 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 and compartmentalize it, but spread it across verticals. So that's the trick. Find that thing that you can do really, really, really well and then build on it. Don't try to do everything at one time. And that, that's kind of where we stuck on it. It's the medical record, understand it, know it, have the subject matter expertise, and then drive for a great value on product. Thank you so much. Uh, so don't you think the smart contracts will make the conventional medical examination obsolete in 10 years or 15 years? So th that's a great question as well, is the, the thing is, you're always gonna have to have some type of human function, right? There's always gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, an adjuster, because that is a professional aspect. Like you're not gonna have something that's fully automated with AI alone, it's a tool, it's, it's a value add, and I think that's where we have to look at this trend. Yeah, that's moving so fast, how do we bolt that on? How do we make that as a module or wrap it? And that, that's, that's critical. Uh, great, uh, great presentation. Um, <clears throat> this is an interesting space that, you know, uh, I think we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, areas of, uh, of functionalities. We are also in the healthcare space, but we have different verticals. And what I've found um, is that a lot of these insurance companies are looking for specific pain points. Yep. So on the medical record itself, you know, let's take an example of a claim. Um, usually there are a lot of different things. Dental claims have different types of information that you might want to distill. Mm -hmm. Are you extracting the x-ray and converting it into text within a certain reasonable amount of time? And then the second challenge uh, that I was trying to figure out how you, you get around this. A lot of times, some of the medical records providers don't have adequate information. Mm -hmm. So for example, a dentist, everyone gets an x-ray when they get there, but not everyone gets a leg x-ray when they go to the hospital. So how do you make sure that your hallucination rates are lower um, you know, and, and are consistent with your plan? So, so amazing technical questions that we'll take offline because I could talk again 20 minutes to this, but at a high level for everyone in the audience, what we, we looked at five years ago when we started wasn't with these LLMs and the new off-the-shelf technologies. We built everything proprietarily and we have our own machine learning pipeline. Then when, with you know, GPT 3.5 and some of these foundational models, we were able to stack that on and that's really where you get the lift. And what you have to look at is how do you combine these modules to get the right output? So there's not one silver bullet and I think that's a fallacy. Everyone thinks, well, I just add regs to it, it'll prevent hallucinations. We've seen it with just, for example, lab reports. None of the LLMs can figure out lab reports at all. So you have to build NLU, NLP, look at software as a solution, and then layer it in. And that goes back to the tooling. And I think that's the win. That's the value that you create in the industry. Well, anyways, I think it's a fallacy. So, Last question, unless there's any other Wise Docs competitors that want to ask more <laughs> detail. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Mohit, and I work in insurance, actually. So I love the product. It's it's amazing. Um, what I'm curious about is you're dealing with such personal identifying information, right? It's so the privacy is so important, and I know from you know my work that we like take it very seriously. So when you were a young company, how did you get past the gatekeepers that are the IT and compliance? Yeah, so I think that's so important and that, that slows down or speeds up your deal cycle, right? What is your GTM motion and, and how are you actually moving it? Um, I think there's a lot more. Two years ago, insurance companies are like, I don't want to do anything with AI. Uh, last year, it just seems like everything opened up there. We need a strategy, kind of like COVID. By a year after, uh, from a corporate structure. Um, but I think really when you look at it from a privacy aspect, start with security of mind. Um, coming from the military, OPSEC, operational security was critical. Build everything around that with best practice. 
your NIST protocols, all of your data residencies within your, your Patriot Act domains, which is essentially Canada, the US, look at uh, de-anonymizing the data. There's all kinds of strategies you can layer in to just have best IT practices. But that, that should be the foremost of, of the triple constraints on how you run the business with PHI. Thanks, Connor. Awesome. Round of applause.